Good morning. It is so good to be here. So thankful that we live in a country such as this, that we can assemble freely. We can look at the word. We can follow a life that God would have us to live. And I'm very thankful for the opportunity to be here. The, the plan of the, the study that we're looking at. And it's true. We live in a world that it's scary out there. It's, it's really, really, it's, matter of fact, it's awful that some of the things going on. I can see it from years ago. I remember when my children were little, we'd have people over. And they'd come in our, in our living room there, and they, they'd visit. Remember one time they were talking about how, how good beer was. You'd have so much fun drinking. You, if you drunk beer, you'd have so much fun. I remember telling my son, he was just a little bitty guy, bad beer. No, you don't want to drink beer, bad beer. And there'd be times people come in, they'd be in the house, and they'd be talking about how, you know, well, you know, they'll the, the say things, use God's name in vain, or euphemisms, and I'd tell my kids, don't, don't, you, don't you listen to that. that, that's bad, that's bad words, don't listen to those kind of words. Remember, they'd come in my house, and they'd talk about, well, you know, you, you, you're kind of backwards, you know, there, there's a sexual revolution that's beginning, and we need to be open more, open to, to different relationships and things like that, and I'd tell my kids, oh no, God has a plan, we need to do what God tells us to do. Even the point one time, there's some saying, you know, homosexual, the homosexual lifestyle, if people want to do that, they need to be free to express themselves and live that way, to come out of the closet. No, children, that's wrong. That's wrong. But one day, in my living room, people there, they begin fondling each other, taking reaching and starting to take each other's clothes off in my living room. I got up and I went back to my bedroom, got my 20-gauge shotgun, put a shell in it, cocked it, and draw, drove it back and stayed right there. And my wife stepped in front of the TV and turned it off. You see what I've been talking about? All these illustrations of things we've been hearing. It's been coming through media. Coming through the entertainment world as it's trying to influence us in our lives. And it has done a really good job in our culture and our world today. Their desire is to, to pull us away from what God would have and how God would have us to live. It reminds me in Acts chapter number 13. You remember Paul and Barnabas as they're beginning that very first missionary journey. As they go to that first stop there, the, uh, the island of Patmos. A certain false teacher called Bar-Jesus. A little bit later we call him as Elamus. And Sergius Paulus, the, the commander there, wanted to hear more. And here this man, as he wanted to hear God's word, Elamus, the sorcerer, it referred to him in verse number 8, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. There's been people throughout the ages that want to turn people away from God's word, his will. I'm kind of like Paul, Saul, the name also known as Paul there in chapter 13. I'm going to let, I'm going to let it be heard. You remember what takes, takes place there in that, that little island? There in chapter 13, is, is, uh, he looked intently at this man, Elamus, and said, Oh, full of deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil. He called Elamus just who he was, referring to him the son of the devil. You are the enemy of all righteousness. Will you not stop perverting the straight way of the Lord? We need to. We've got to. We've got to be ready to begin saying, hey, there are people who are the sons of the devil. They are perverting the truth and trying to keep righteousness, godliness from being what it needs to be. Peter tells us, we read in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 1, in referring to the world's influence, Verse number three, for we have spent enough of our of the past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. You know, one time we were living the way the world was. And he's talking to people who have turned to God and changed their lives. And described, this is the way they were. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, and makes all this list of things that they had been involved. 
And now, as they were that way, now look at the way that people look at them. Now, verse number four, in regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation. And what do they do? Speaking evil of you. We do, as we live in a world today, doing all they can to make crooked the straight ways of the Lord. Speaking evil of what is righteousness. And doing all they can to keep us from what God would have us to be. Immoral entertainment and pornography. The world is full of lies. I believe it was Lyndall Mitchell that looked in Isaiah chapter number 5 and verse number 20. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open it up there as we look at that passage just very, very quickly. As we begin seeing this is what we're facing in this world. This is the, the, the world, the, the media that we face, the, the things that we see. This is what we're seeing. Verse number 20. Woe to those who call good Evil good and good evil. So there is woe. There is trouble for those who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to them who try to confuse what is right and what is wrong. And the world the, of entertainment is doing just that. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. They think, oh, yes, we've got this all figured out. And as soon as you, as everybody else in this world, this culture, as soon as you get along on the wagon and start joining with the rest of it, then you can be wise like us. They are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to men, mightily at drinking wine. Woe to men, valiant for mixing intoxicating drink, who justify the wicked for a bribe and justice, uh, and justice from the righteous man. Therefore, the fire devours the stubble. What, what will take place? And their blossom will descend like dust because they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. We look at what, why we're at the situation or why such a, a message such as this we're looking at this weekend is so important. It's because people have allowed to be influenced by the wicked world around us. I've told people, and I've worked with young people. I knew Charles Billingsley back in Fort Worth, and as uh, he was there at Las Vegas Trail, he, he knew me as a young and dumb uh, uh, minister, associate minister, working with youth, education, family, and such as that. But what I saw very quickly is that young people will become with two influences. Number one, the other people they hang around with. They're going to become like those people. And two, the things that they put inside their minds, whether it be listening to music, watching TV, movies, reading books, become what you put in your mind. Our goal, our, our, our responsibility is to seek after righteousness going to divide this class into two parts. We'll look at uh, the immoral entertainment, but we also want to look at pornography. We'll start with the pornography part first. There's no one who is exempt. Brother Joe Caesars, he spoke yesterday, said, you know, even the, 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 the women, they'll look at the men. You know, they're, they're not exempt either, but no one is exempt. Well, he, he's an old man. He, he's not tempted by that anymore. Remember a time years ago, uh, the Toyota Tundra had just come out, and I thought, you know, one day when they get about 10 years old, I'll be able to afford a used one. You know, I like the Tundra, you know, so I was, I was going to wait for it. But somebody there at church had, had got a Toyota Tundra, and I thought, well, cool. And during, I don't know, a, a, a break between class or something, I, I went out just to peek in the windows to see, to see what it looked like inside. You know, it was a really cool truck. And as I looked through it, and I knew this man. He was a widower. He was an older man. And looking the window in the back seat, several magazines of the Playboy magazines. My mouth dropped open. I mean, that older man is looking at such as this. 
There's no one that's going to be exempt. We've all got to keep our guard up. We all have to be careful of what, of the influence that, could, that is the world around us, known as pornography. Years ago, uh, I believe it was 2009, perhaps, they did a, 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 a research study where they actually put electrodes on a man's brain. We're going to talk about men because men, you know, are, are very visual kind of things. We are. And they put electrodes on the brain to, to see what parts of the brain would react when they saw different uh, stimuli. Uh, showed tools, you know, drills and all that kind of stuff. And that part of the brain lit up saying, manipulate, take care of. We're going to grasp and take care of this. And they showed different things, but they came to, and it only seconds that it showed these pictures, it showed a, a young girl in a bikini. The same part of the brain that was activated when looking at tools and being aggressive and taking and, and manipulating, being the object, is the same part of the brain lit up. Now, as I was looking back over this article the other day is of, of this, and, and the article was written in a worldly, secular way. It said that the way the mind has evolved where uh, the, 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 man, the human race could procreate by doing it. <laughs> no, what it is is God's made us this way, but the man has to guard himself. He's got to gird up the loins of his mind, being careful what he looks, looks at and how he's going to live. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, in verse number 3, For this is the will of God. What is the will of God? Your sanctification. God's will is for us to be a holy people. Goes on. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passions of lust, like the Gentiles, who do not know God. We are, God wants us to be a people who are holy. Abstaining from, fleeing from, sexual immorality. The Greek word there, and we've probably heard this before, is the word pornea. Word pornea can be translated in a number of different ways from uh, illicit sexual intercourse, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, intercourse with animals, sexual intercourse with close relatives, sexual intercourse with a divorced or a married woman. It's the sexual desires, this pornea. We get the word today, what? Pornography. Looking at things that are illicit, those things that are they're sexually stimulating. So we continue this thought of immorality. Men will give definitions of what is moral and what is not moral. They'll tell us this is, this is what it is. We can go to dictionaries and look up all kinds of things and say, well, this is what the, the dictionary says. But we begin looking at morality. It is identified and described by God. God is the one who's identified what is right and what is wrong. And what is wrong is referred to as sin. And many of us are probably familiar. The word sin is an archery term where someone would take an arrow and they would shoot the arrow. It would miss the target. It would say that it had sinned. It had missed the target. What we have to keep in mind when we look at morality is that God is the one who has set the target. The, he's the one that he said, this is what I want of my people. And to miss the target, we sin. What is morality? What is immoral? God is the one who has established immorality. The proverb writer writes much about this concept of pornography and looking at uh, the woman in a lustful way. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 25 the writer warns do not lust after the beauty in your heart nor let her allure you with her eyelids i remember as a young man getting ready and leaving off to college had the car car all packed and i was about to get in the car and drive off and and my mama said don't let the girls catch you with your eye her their eyelids I knew exactly what she was meaning. 
She was talking about this passage and saying, don't allow the, the, those who would be uh, seductive to turn you away from God. Verse 26, for by means of a harlot, a man is reduced to a crust of bread and adulterers will prey upon his precious life. Can a man take a fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can he walk on hot coals and his feet not be seared? Looking, looking at pornography will destroy you. It will destroy your heart. It will destroy your mind. What we must do, and this is a passage that I've turned to young people to again, again, and again. Job chapter 31 and verse number 1. We've got to establish, I am going to be committed. I am going to be determined to be exactly what God would have of me. Job says in verse number 1 of chapter 31, I've made a covenant with my eyes. Now, here the, his friends were accusing him. Now, what terrible, awful thing have you done to have all these bad things? And Job says, it's not at all. And he says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. I'm not guilty of, of, of sinning with my eyes. He says, why then should I look upon a young woman or a young maiden? What we must do is have the same attitude as Job. Make a covenant. I am not going to. To look. I'm not going to allow my eyes to be focused upon pornography. Now, two times we're going to find in the book of Matthew Jesus addressing our eyes and our hands and the drastic measures that must be done in order to keep us away from such sin. In Matthew chapter 5, as Jesus speaks on the Sermon on the Mount, he's going to describe the importance of of keeping our, our hearts and minds through our eyes and our hands pure. Notice when we begin in verse 27. You have heard it said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now let's look at the word looks. Now the word looks, and there's a lot of different words that, that describe uh, using our eyes and looking within the Greek language. But specifically, as we look at this word looks, it's the word that is present active. It means looks and continues to look, focusing the eyes upon. Now, we may think pornography is going to be uh, perhaps in a, a digital form where we're looking at it on a phone or, we, or we're looking at it in a magazine or such as that. But there's oftentimes pornography, well, there is pornography, strutting in the world around us. As Joe talked about um, immodest dress yesterday, there's those that, that you know, they, they're, they're showing much more than what is modest. I've been working at Chick-fil-A as a delivery driver. Yeah, one of those things, you know, working for my uh, retirement kind of thing, finishing that stuff up. And there's all kind of humanity that walk through the doors of Chick-fil-A. I never cease to be amazed of the the nakedness, the immoral dress that takes place. And I have to keep in my mind and remember, I've made a covenant with my eyes not to look on the young maiden. Years ago, I'd make it a habit that I'd look at the ceiling. And I remember being in Walmart, and I spent a lot of my time in Walmart looking at the ceiling because, you know, all kinds of people immodestly dressed. Thought, have you ever looked at the ceiling? You know, there's a lot of bird nests and things up there on the ceiling there in Walmart. Have you seen the wires? That's interesting how they do that. But my son made mention years ago saying, Daddy, I admire how you always wouldn't look. You know, there at Chick-fil-A, I'll, I'll be there waiting for my order to, to take it and deliver it. And someone will come in. And we, you can't miss them. I mean, everyone, in the, and that's the design where they're dressed in the way they are. They're, they're dressed so they'll draw attention. And you can't help but see them. But what do you do? Do you present active? Do you continue to look? No, you've got to turn your eyes away. And what I've come to do is, as I turn my eyes away, I begin looking at other people in the store. And there are those who get their eye full and fill their eyes up. But I've been noticing as well, though, some of these young men who are working there at Chick-fil-A, too, 
as someone like that comes in, we all say, oh, uh, you know, and, and I begin looking around. They look at me. And I'm known as Mr. Doyle. Mr. Doyle, he doesn't look as in continually look. Can't help but see. I mean, it's there, but you don't dwell on it. So here, Jesus says, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her in his, uh, her has already committed adultery in your heart. What must we do? Verse 29, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it would be more profitable that one of your members perish than your whole body to be cast into hell. It's going to make you stumble. Take your eye and pluck it out. Verse 30. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable that one of the members of your body perish than your whole body to be cast into hell. Now we all know that Jesus is not speaking literally. Because I could take that one eye that is focusing upon that young lady and I could pluck that eye out and I cut that hand off. I still have one more eye that I could look around, right? He's not talking about a physically cutting off and plucking your eye. He's talking about you. Must, if there's something radical you must do, do it. Do whatever you need to do to keep from allowing yourself to stumble and to lust in your heart. I've, I've counseled lots of young men over the years. Oftentimes at camp, you know, they're away from the, the world and they're saying, I, I've had struggle, struggle at home with this. And years ago, it was on the computer. So what you've got to do with that computer, you've got to put that computer right in the middle of the living room. You know, anybody that walks by, they can see what you're, you're looking at. Now today you have what? Boy, you have these smart aleck phones. And you can see all kind of things all around, all around the world in just a few touches of the button. It may be something that needs to be cut off. Your eye plucked out. I would, I would advise very strongly to have someone who will hold you accountable. And even though you're not, you're not, you're not... I just want you to know, I want you to be check up on me. My wife, she'll pick up my phone every once in a while, usually it's to find me, what I've been texting with my son and see what, what the news is down in Mexico, and she'll look at it. She can look at all of my phone, see what I've been looking at, where I've been, being held accountable. But it may be something that you have a phone, the temptation is so strong and so, so much desire, you need to take that phone and you need to, Throw it away. You need to put it under the car and drive over it and go back to a flip phone. This is what Jesus is saying. Cut your hand off. Pluck your eye out. Whatever inconvenient it might be here on this earth, you need to do it so you can one day spend eternity in heaven. And with this, I've seen so many families fall apart. I know of a, a young woman one time, is she, she was describing how her husband's been watching, looking at pornography. And how it just tore her heart out that he was looking at pornography. His comment, you know, remember the charge? His comment was, I'm just, just window shopping. I'm not, I'm not out to buy anything. I'm just looking. Well, that marriage and many others have, have fallen apart and been destroyed. Pornography. Looking destroys lives. The next topic to look at, oh, that, we have an hour, you said. This hour that he's speaking? Well, okay, I know. I know. He, he says I have a five-minute warning bell, so hopefully we can see what we can cover. You realize, in comparison to how many R-rated movies there are, how many G-rated movies there are, you know what movies make more money? G-rated or R-rated movies? No, the R-rated movies don't make nearly the money that the, the better movies, you know, the more 
uh, respectable movies do. But so much goes in these movies. And now even those G-rated movies, buyer beware. If you haven't heard in Florida a few months ago, and the, the media and the LGBTQ plus crowd, they began pronouncing it as a law that Florida, uh, the, the gutter sign, was going to sign was don't say gay bill. You remember hearing about that? Don't say gay bill. And, and basically what it was is that little children that were fourth grade and younger, that they weren't supposed to talk about sexual things in, in, the, in the classrooms at school. And it wasn't so much about that at all. It's just, that's, don't talk about sex in there. In Florida, what's the big company, the media company in Florida? Disney. Oh, the millions and millions and probably billions of dollars that, that Disney has taken in from, from the world around. Some of their employees, they went nuts. And they went to their CEO and said, you've got to do something. Do something about it. And the CEO said, well, what we'll do is we'll make our move in the movies and the influence we can have in the movies was not enough. We got to do more. He even met with the governor about this deal. Well, has Disney done something about it? Now, if you've been listening at all, uh, there's new movies come out. But now it's really not a whole lot of difference because there have been other movies in the past that will, will push and advance the, the immoral world around us, talking about immoral entertainment. Uh, even the Lion King, you know, the innuendos with the monkey and the warthog. Uh, the movie Car, you remember the car movie where the little car sped around, a little red car? You're watching that movie, there's a scene where uh, there's two cars that are in a garage that are doing something, they're, they're looking and doing something which would have been a sexual act of homosexuals in that. Kind of, kind of low toned, not right out in your face, but it's not anymore. Disney is in your face. Toy Story. Anybody watch Toy Story? Oh, we loved watching Toy Story with our kids growing up. And, you know, they were fun, they were humorous, they were light, and they were active. And, and even when Woody was going to be kissed by the, the girl, you know, you know, he'd come up his head, you know, try to get away. Well, the new movie with Buzz Lightyear, and if you haven't heard this, I'm, you know, I'm not saying some people probably haven't heard, but it's been banned in many countries around the world having more sense than to have a homosexual star in the movie and having a scene in the movie where, and I may be getting into Austin's, uh, but we're talking about movie and entertainment, aren't we? Here he was having a, a kissing scene, two male toys. Now I'm talking about toys, male, it's crazy. They're trying to influence our children. And the media today is they pour all the things they can to destroy us. What we've got to do is to shoot the TV. Get your shotgun out and shoot the TV. Now, uh, uh, in a little bit, I'll tell you more about what we actually did in shooting the TV. There's a little bit more to it. But uh, th there's a second time. You mentioned earlier that Jesus talked about plucking the eye out and cutting the hand off. In chapter number 18, he's going to go back to that topic as well. As he says, woe to the world because of offenses. The world is going to try to influence. Woe to the world. And it goes on as he describes to, you know, cut your foot off and cut your hand off. Uh, the idea of plucking your eye out. But my story about shooting the TV. Now, this, this would be, you could say, uh, the rest of the story, the true story. Uh, now, it's close to reality that the influence of the, the media that comes in and the sin, but I really didn't, I really didn't pull out a gun and, and load it and all that. I have to admit, that's part of this, the story. That I, but this is the true story. Uh, this had been back 25 years ago, or maybe a little bit more. I was digging a ditch by the house, and we had an antenna on the house and had the cable going in to the TV in the house, right? And I was digging, I'm a really good, I can dig a ditch pretty good for a preacher. And, and there's a root. Chop, I cut that root right in two. And as soon as I cut it in two, I realized, oh, that was the cable to the TV antenna. Oh, no one hurried off to the store. Got to get the stuff to repair that cable. Of course, it's being under the ground. If you ever done work like that, every time it rains, the TV gets a snowy cast on it. Ah. Now, my problem, I was a sports nut. Ah, you know, 
I had to watch TV, watch the sports, basketball, baseball, football, you know. I, I was a sports fan. And finally had to take the TV out of the house. The cable was long enough I could run it and put it inside the shop outside the house. And matter of fact, I remember, was it 2001, 9-11 took place? I was out in the barn or the shop watching that as it took place. Finally, I announced to my family, my children, we're going to fix the antenna. I'm going to get another one. We're going to fix it all up. We can bring the TV back in the house. And my kids looked at me and said, oh, Daddy, you really don't have to. I think they kind of liked it better having me around instead of gawking and staring at uh, sports, you know, football or whatever going on, just being able to, to have a quiet time in the house. So that's how the TV was shot. And today, someone said, have you seen the such and such commercial? And I go, mm, no, I don't have a TV in my house. Oh, what about the newest, the, the sitcom that's going on? It's just so hilarious. Have you seen that? I go, mm, no, but I, I've written this really cool book. Have you read this book here, this book? My encouragement is to shoot the TV. Now, there was a, a missionary that years ago suggested we put it in storage for a month and I thought that was crazy, but then after doing it now for about 25 years, I really haven't missed the TV. Now, there's sometimes you think, well, I wonder what's going on, but anymore you can get all your news on, uh, you know, the, through the internet and things like that, all, all you, more than what you really want to know. Take time to shoot the TV. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 18 through 20, encouraged, flee sexual immorality. Now, this is going to be the same word as pornea that we looked at moments ago. Flee sexual immorality and every sin that a man does outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Flee. Run from those things that would pull us away from God. Now, I knew a preacher years ago As he would say, he's saying that, yeah, he'd put his kids to bed at night. And then his wife, he and his wife, they would watch those R-rated movies then. But it wasn't for the children. They wouldn't dare allow their children to watch that. It was just for them. Kind of reminds me of someone who say, oh, we've got to tell these young girls not to drink alcohol. Don't let a guy get them to drink alcohol because it may lower the inhibitions. Imagine that. And then the next paragraph in his sermon, he'll say, but have a small cup of wine with your meal. That's just fine. It's okay. The story about this young family who put their children to bed and watch these movies. None of the children are faithful to God. His wife eventually found someone who looked more like the guy on TV than he did and divorced him. Flee sexual immorality in job chapter 31 again as i mentioned earlier it job said i have made a covenant with my eyes not to look at the young maiden but you take something out of your 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 life you've got to put something back in or they will creep right back in on you you've got to you determine i'm not going to you've got to find something else and let's look in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9, before uh, our time is over. Philippians chapter 4, beginning verse number 8. Finally, brethren, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. Are there movies that could be good and wholesome out there? Yeah. Not a whole lot. Are there books and things that we can read that would be good and, and helpful and help us grow to be more God people? Yes. The very best one is the Word of God itself. As it continues, verse number 9. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the peace of God will be with you. Where and when will we find the peace of God? 
when we meditate, when we look to, when we put in our hearts and minds, not the things of this world that so desperately is pulling us away from God, but when we focus upon the goodness of God, what God would have us to be, the concerns and needs of others, and glorifying Him. May God be the one who is glorified. There's a number of other scriptures and passages we could look at. In the book of Proverbs, it's, it's full of warnings to the, the young man. And what, over again, again, it would encourage them to do is seek wisdom. Look for things that are wise. Because the things that are unwise are the things that will destroy you. The things that will take you away from God. And, oh, there's so many good things to describe uh, there in the book of Proverbs. But the one thing I'd like us to finish with, as we look in Genesis chapter number 39, we have a young man far from home, but he had a vision of whose he was. He belonged to God. And there he was in a situation where, as a slave, that he did very well. He excelled. As a matter of fact, he became so good that the owner of the household put him in charge of absolutely everything. He's in charge of all. And maybe you're thinking, remembering his, his, his boss's name, his owner's name, the one who owned him was Potiphar. And as he worked there around that house, he was a good looking young man. And Potiphar's wife looked at him, looked at him and lusted for him. Talking about not just men lusting, women lusting too. And again and again, she'd say, oh, lie with me. And he'd say, no, I can't do that. I can't. One day, and her orchestrate, she's orchestrated everything, had everything planned out. They were alone. Alone in the house. And again, he said, lie with me. And you recall, as Joseph, he said, how can I do this awful thing and sin against your husband Potiphar? Now, if you know that passage, that's not what it says. How could I do this awful thing and sin against the nation of Egypt and put a mar on the nation of Egypt? No, that's not what he said either. My daddy brought me up better than that. How could I do such an awful thing and sin against my own parents? No, that's not what he said. Joseph said what truly it all comes back to. How can I do such a thing and sin against God. You realize our relationship with God is what it's all about. And as the story continues, you recall, she grabbed hold of him. <laughs> You're going to be mine. He let go of his outer garment and he ran out of the house without any clothes on. She was embarrassed. Now, things got bad for Joseph. Joseph was then, you know, what, what could the master do? He, he might even knew that the whole, the true story, but you know, the, you, know, you got to do something. Here's this slave is who has, who has done this thing. I've got to, so what did he do? I threw him in prison. As we look and we go through this life, we've got to stand up and say, I cannot dare do this and sin against God. We will have the culture and the world around us and known as the cancel culture, they will demonize, they will do all kinds of things to make us look stupid, despicable, awful, whatever word you want to find, but we've got to stand up and declare, how could I do such a thing as this and, and sin against God? I'm thankful we have God's word, his direction. He said, established, this is sin, this is the direction we need to go in, and we can do with all of our might, aim for that target, to live for him. Appreciate it very much. I've enjoyed uh, preparing this lesson. I'm looking forward to, to uh, Saul and to uh, Austin Wiggins later in the day. Thank you very much. Looking forward to visiting with you all.